Hello there. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Harris and I am a final year medical student. And this channel is all about making your med school journey a bit easier. So we are taught what to study in med school, but we are not taught how to study in med school. And that to me is really important. So yeah, I'm just going to be sharing different strategies on how you can remember the different names, the different structures. Now starting off with uh, how. So the first tip that I have is broadly scope the units and make flowcharts. So what I mean by that is that an example there's like 600 muscles in the body, right? And you are required to remember every single one of them. So how are you going to do that? So for me, what worked for me was dividing the muscles into different compartments and then studying it compartment wise. So these are my notes from like first year. And as you can see, I have divided the muscles into the different compartments like shoulder girdle and then upper arm and forearm. So this helped me remember the muscles better because I know that but muscles are in different compartments. I would suggest going through all the content first just to see what you are required to remember and then you can uh, go deeper into each section. And the second thing that it does is uh, the nerve supply and the arteries are the same for the upper arm and the forearm, right? So mostly same. So the nerve and the arteries you can just remember by the compartments. So the second tip I have is visual memorization and do not underestimate this. Because anatomy is not physiology, right? You are not required to remember some concept about membrane potential. Like that's a concept that you once do and you're going to remember it for the rest of your life. But anatomy is really volatile. And you are probably not going to remember most of the stuff by your second year. So I would suggest always having a visual memorization and always knowing what muscles or what nerves or what arteries go where, right? So if you look at this diagram, it's a really nice diagram. So you have a photographic memory of the hand and this is going to help you remember it long term. The third tip that helped me a lot was mnemonics. So mnemonics are great. Mnemonics can be used for every single thing you want to learn, right? So an example is the loaf muscles. So uh, we know that the nerve supply of the hand is mostly adrenal nerve except the loaf muscles which are supplied by the median nerve. So that's how we remember the nerve supply of the hand. And the loaf muscles are the latter two lumbricals, the opponent's pollicis, the adductor pollicis brevis, and the flexor pollicis brevis. So just remembering loaf is a good way to remember all of these muscles. But if you want to remember every single one with your names without a memory hook, then it's going to be really hard for you to remember. So always, always, always use mnemonics to remember the names that are hard for you. The fourth tip that I have is active recall and space repetition and I cannot emphasize this enough. So what if you don't know already what active recall and space repetition is. Active recall is basically uh, you recalling something you remembered without using any help. So you remembered like five muscles, right? So just try close your eyes and try to remember them in your mind. And that's active recall. You are actively engaging your brain to recall those muscles and this what it does is it helps you uh, develop your memory long term right so it helps you go from short term memory to long term memory so in like three years to five years when you are required to remember those muscles in your surgical rotations you are going to remember them because your brain already has that active recall and space repetition is the same but space repetition is uh, you try to remember something a day a week a month and a year right so that's you spacing out your memory and you uh, filling in the hooks or filling in the gaps in your memories uh, the 3d structures are great to remember and at me right because we are 3d we are not 2d so while 2d structures work for most of the parts there are some parts that i would suggest going 3d for and there are these apps are really good like uh, if you go to these apps, they like dissect your parts layer by layer. So there's skin, there's fascia, there's different uh, muscles, their bones. Like so, those parts, these apps are gonna dissect them part by part, and you're gonna know the exact location of every single anatomical structure. So yeah, there are different apps in Android as well that do the same thing. So I would suggest using them. Some videos of Giga Medics, There's some videos of, about medicine on YouTube. And these are really good. I have tried them. 
So yeah, always try to imagine your body as a 3D structure rather than a 2D structure. See, these are the apps. You can literally dissect the layers from skin to fascia to muscles to bones. So the YouTube channels, the first one is Anatomy Zone. Now, let me tell you something. You are not required to do every single one of them, right? It's just impossible to do. So just do what works for you. So Anatomy Zone is great. Anatomy Zone uses a 3D software to teach. And that to me was really nice because it just makes sense, right? So Anatomy Zone is great for that. Ninja Nerd. I have used Ninja Nerd for real models because Ninja Nerd uh, is great for OSPs or OSCEs because Ninja Nerd uses 3D models to teach and that to me was great. Armando is great if you want to learn different nerves, different structures and the noted anatomist is great about nerves. Can Hub uh, is paid, it's not free and there are, although there are some videos on YouTube it's not completely free. So yeah, you need to look out for that. Institute of Human Anatomy is great. So these six channels are the ones I would suggest for anatomy. There are other channels as well. There are Indian channels as well. But then I would suggest these because the information given here is mostly authentic. Now the websites. So the best and the only website you need is Teach Me Anatomy, honestly. Uh, it was great. It is great. But it used to be completely free and now it's paid for some parts. But still, it's like a lot of free content. And then I would suggest it because it is like the best thing. It's like you getting notes that you never made, right? So it tells you all the essential things you need to know about muscles, about groups, about everything. So yeah, do check it out. And other than that, just Google, man, you know. If you Google, you are going to get the images you need. You are going to get the resources you need. You don't need an atlas. You just need Google. And Google has amazing images. You just need a phone and a and an internet connection and you're good to go to learn anatomy. So the other websites, the trustable ones are Medscape and Clearwright Clinic. But again, just Google and any website you get is good enough for anatomy. So the don'ts, the don'ts are really important, right? So you might think you know anatomy, but trust me, you don't know anatomy until you have used those methods and until you have tested yourself. So do not try to memorize anatomy blindly. Anatomy is really volatile and you're gonna forget it over time. And when you're in your surgical rotation in your final year, your consultant is going to ask you which nerve supplies the latest, the latest missed or side muscle, and you're not going to remember it. So yeah, you're going to forget like 90% of the stuff by the next year. So I would suggest doing it once and doing it right. The second thing is do not try to memorize everything. Anatomy is a big, big, big subject, right? There's like 600 muscles. There's arteries, veins, nerves. Like do not try to memorize every single thing, every single uh, origin is the issue of the muscles like just remember what you need to remember and as I said earlier like if it's a group of muscles you, and you need to know, know the artery nerve and vein of it then the whole group is supplied by one artery and one nerve and one vein for the most part right and the exceptions you can remember them and always remember the exceptions as I said because your exceptions are your MCQs so always remember the exceptions now the last thing that i would suggest is learning anatomy practically and not just theoretically now what i mean by that is that you need to know why you are learning that anatomy right so if you are learning uh, muscles or compartments why are you learning it it's to treat compartment syndrome right so you are gonna be required to remember the anatomy later on so remember it in a way that that is practical for you that can be used later so do not just memorize the muscles blindly, not knowing what where they are, what they do, and what movements they do. So yeah, that's going to be very useless to you. So try to apply it practically and clinically. All right, that's all for now. Do let me know which uh, subjects to cover next. And if you guys have any questions regarding anatomy, you can ask them down in the comments below. And I'll try to answer as much as I can. Consider subscribing if it helped you. 